Hey, this is Lee Waller, and right now I am in Cinema 4D Lite, and I'm going to take a look at how to render out an animation from Cinema 4D Lite. We're going to have to use After Effects to accomplish this. Now, this is just one frame of this little animation that I've created. This is uh, my restaurant, the Fancy 10, not that I have a real restaurant. But if I was, I would call it the Fancy 10, and this is what it would look like when you walk into the restaurant. Now, just to kind of jump through this animation real quick, go back to the beginning, start at the beginning and play through. You see that uh, the logo drops into place and then there's some camera movement there. This is uh, 300 frames, 30 frames per second. So it's a 10 second long animation. So to render it out, we're going to have to jump into After Effects. So I am now in After Effects and I'm going to set up a composition, the same resolution, frame rate and time as my Cinema 4D project. So 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second. And I need to adjust that to 10 seconds there. And hit OK. Now I'm going to import that Cinema 4D file. And so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to double click in this area to import, jump to my desktop. There is my Fancy 10 logo.c4d. Open that up. We have it now imported into After Effects. I'm just going to grab that Cinema 4D file and drop it down into my timeline. Check it to make sure that my time is correct from beginning to end. It fits my composition. It's showing up now in my viewer. And you'll see that it's in a draft mode. So once we drop that into the composition, you should notice also that we have the Cineware plugin popping up in our effect control tab. If you don't have that, just drop down to your Cinema 4D file down here in the timeline, open up effects and double click on Cineware there and it should pop open. One thing that we want to change on this is we're going to go from viewport here under renderer. Go from viewport and set it to current. So now we're ready to render this out. If I think my render might take a long time, possibly hours, one of the ways that I'm going to render this out is rather than going from here to Adobe Media Encoder, I'm going to actually render it to the render queue. And the settings that I'm going to choose here, I'm going to jump jump into the output module right here where it says lossless and click on that. And under format, I'm going to drop down to a PNG sequence and check my format options, hit OK on that. Everything else looks good. And I'm going to render this out as a PNG sequence, which means each frame that is rendered out is going to be a PNG graphic. Let me check here. I'm just going to set this up real quick on my desktop new folder. Open that up and you'll see that it is going to, based on the name of the comp right now, which is just comp one. Uh, and then it's going to number each PNG that it creates. So I'm going to hit save on that. And when I'm ready, just start rendering. Based on the project and how complicated it is, this may take just a few minutes or it could take several hours. I'm going to come back once this is done. All right, once that has finished rendering in After Effects, I'm going to open up the folder that uh, it is in. You'll notice then that we should have, based on our sequence and frames per second, 300 PNGs. So starting there with zero, and we'll scrub all the way down to 299 right there. And each one of those PNGs represents one frame of the video that we just rendered out. Now, to complete this out, this is not a video clip, of course. We need to make it into a video clip. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. But for right now, what I'm going to do is jump into Adobe Media Encoder and render it into uh, an H.264. So now I'm in media encoder and I'm going to, I'm going to click the plus button here and I'm going to navigate to that folder with all of the 
PNGs in it. I'm going to click on the first one, and you'll notice now that it does recognize it as a PNG file sequence. So it's going to bring all of these in as a video clip. So we're going to open it. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to select the PNG sequence right there, right click on it and go to interpret footage. And I'm going to make sure that it's using the frame rate that I want it to. And 29.97 will work. If I, if I want to, I can force it to 30. Or if uh, a lot of times what will happen on a PNG sequence, if you've rendered it out at 24 frames per second, it will still interpret it as a 29.97. And so a lot of times you'll need to go in there and uh, force it to the 24 frames per second. So once I've done that, I'll hit OK. And check my settings here. I want it to render to an H.264 match source. High bit rate works good. And just make sure that this is dropping on my desktop. And I'll just leave the name as is for right now. Hit save on it and then render that out. You see the render right there. And now I'll jump to the video clip. There it is. Open that up. And here is my finished render. All right. Now, the reason that I chose to render it that way is, uh, one, for quality. We get a little bit better quality out of it this way. Two, if I have a render that's going to take quite a long time, and that one did take over an hour to render, if for some reason the render gets interrupted, whether we have a crash on the computer, a crash with the software, or you just have to stop it for some reason, whatever PNG number it stopped on, whichever frame it stopped on, you can come back to it. All of those PNGs are still there. You can pick up with the next one and continue to render out. So if you have a very complicated project that's going to take a long time to render, you can use that method to render it out in increments, and then you can take that finished PNG sequence and quickly render it out as whatever other format you wanted to, like we did just then with the H.264. I hope this has been helpful. For more on motion media design, check out my other tutorials.